Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give him praise in this place. I know we got some people in here who is excited about the Lord. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Have the Lord been good to you? Has he been good to you? I know it's cold outside, but it's warm in here. Hallelujah. It's warm in here and it's warm in here. Glory to God. The fire of God is in this house right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise today. We honor you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. We love you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. We give you honor and we give you praise. All the honor and the glory belongs to you, Lord. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Your word declares that praise is calmly for the saints, it's calmly for the believer. It's our place, it's our desire, it's our exciting moments to give you the glory. It's our exciting moments to praise you, to clap our hands. Glory, hallelujah. Clap your hands, oh ye people, and magnify his holy name, for he is worthy of all the glory and all the honor. You are, Lord, you are, 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 hallelujah. You are worthy of all the honor and the glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, we give you glory. We honor you, Lord. We understand and know it's because of you that we live and we move and we have our being. Many didn't wake up this morning. Many didn't wake up. Many didn't get to breathe this morning, but you declared to us and you told us in your word, you said, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And Lord, I'm breathing. I got this mic in my hand. It's proof that I'm breathing. <laughs> and because of you, I'm breathing. I move because of you. I have my soul existence because of you. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. You kept me another day. You kept us all another day. You gave us a chance to redo yesterday. Yesterday is gone and we can better today. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And everybody said amen. And amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise in this house. Glory to God. He is worthy. He is certainly worthy of all the honor and the glory. God bless all of you all for being here today. Amen. I, 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 I tell you what, if I was a, a, a psalmist, I'd sing. I'd sing. Yes, I will. Go on, I could sing. You say I could sing. If you say I could sing, I can sing. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We Ah! <laughs> 
and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, lift those hands all over the building. If he's worthy to you, if he's your Alpha and your Omega. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, I'm excited today. I am, I am, I really am indeed excited. Thank God for, amen, all of you, and thank God for safe travels from Valdosta, Georgia, in the house. Amen. Thank God, amen, for them making it, amen, here safely to be with us on this morning my son and daughter i guess that would be my grandson back there in the back <laughs> thank god for all of amen the believers uh, in the house today but but before we uh turn this mic over i want to give a a power moment on yesterday i had the the privilege and the luxury of watching the, the playoff games. And the one that strikes me the most would be Green Bay and San Francisco. The Lord gave me a scripture, and I want to share this with, with the believer because it has some connection with that game on yesterday. Romans 16 and 20 says, and the Lord, the, the, the God of peace, somebody said the God of peace, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Good God Almighty. Tell somebody, say, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> out of all the, uh, and now listen to me, listen to me real good. Out of all the Hades, out of all the trouble, out of all the circumstances and conditions, all the stuff the devil done took me through, he going to be under my feet shortly. <laughs> Glory to God. We go, we go. Y'all remember when Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He, him being lifted up. And it says in, in Genesis chapter 3 that he would bruise the head of the serpent. Glory to God. And guess, and guess what? He's getting ready to uh, change. We're going to change places. Real soon, we're going to be bruising the enemy's head under our feet. Glory to God. Romans, somebody said Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace. Now, now it's something, something about peace, uh, uh, Pastor, that, that that's, we sometimes misconstrue. We think peace is no trouble. Oh, Y'all help me. We, we, we think peace is, there's no chaos going on around me. Peace is God is with me. Glory to God. That's what peace is. Peace is God is with me. Glory to God. And if God be with me, who can be against me? So no storm, no, no body, no bills, no nothing can be against me if God be for me. So and the God of peace, somebody said the God of peace. Glory to God. Shall bruise Satan under your feet. So that means God is with me for me to be in a position to put Satan's head under my feet. Uh, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know uh, we started the year out with, with uh, the, the Lord told us, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm expersing to you exponential favor. See, favor, now that wasn't favor for the first of the year. <laughs> that's favor for the rest of my life. Come on now, that's favor for the rest of my life. For the rest of your life, God is, ex, is, is, uh, ex, is uh, uh, what, 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 what they say, uh, expensing. Uh, when you go to the commissary, <laughs> you go, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's expensing to us favor. Somebody say favor. favor. Glory to God. Now watch this now. And, and the grace of that the favor of our God, Jesus Christ, be with you. Somebody say, be with you. Now, now it, it got to be with you if it's with you. Just like they're with you, they're with you. 
Glory to God. They sit right there with you, and they don't look like they're trying to go nowhere else but with you. And the same thing with God. God is what? With us. And, his, and if he's with us, his peace is with us. His favor is what? With us. Oh, glory to God. Now listen to this, and we're done. Somebody say, a power moment. The 49ers and the Green Bay Packers was playing a, a final playoff game of the year for their division. Who's going to go to the playoff? They're, they're playing and, and, and Green Bay looks like they're winning. Green Bay starts out to shoot. They come out to shoot, firing up. Oh, they fired up and they shooting everything they got. And, and it looks like they're going to do the same thing to the 49ers that they did to Dallas on last week. But I heard, oh, I heard, I heard. See, I talked to my cousin this morning, and, and, she, and she was telling me, she said, uh, uh, cousin, I'm not going to be able to go to church today because of X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Y'all talk to me now. And, and then and, and she said, uh, well, I'll I, I make it, I make it uh, next week. And then I got a call. She said, come and get me. And when I went to God, she said, I told the devil, not the day devil. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody said, not the day devil, not the day devil. See, you got to understand that, that life happens. Life happens and everything about life that happened, God ain't in it. Talk to a pastor today. And, 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 and some things that happen, the devil is all up in it. I mean, he all up in it. And you, we got to be able to recognize the devil and God. We got to know the difference. That's why discernment is so important. We got to know the difference. Who's who? Just because I don't feel good don't mean God want me to stay home. Oh, y'all better help me today. <laughs> I said just because I don't feel good don't mean God want me to stay home. And watch this. And just because I do feel good don't mean he want me to go nowhere. Uh, we got to know the difference. We got to know the difference. Now, now, and, and here come Green Bay coming out to shoot. They find all cylinders and they look like they winning. They got the lead. Oh, the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter. Look like they winning the game. And then all of a sudden, the five, the four, the nine say, not the day. Uh, Prudy, somebody said Prudy. Uh, he woke up, boy. He woke up. The whole team woke up, and they got look like they got they got on fire. They got on fire. They got a wave, and they said, "Listen, if we don't give it all now, it's over." You all look at that neighbor. Said neighbor, if we don't give it all now, it's over. There ain't no time to quit. There ain't no ain't no time to give up. There ain't no time to throw in the towel. I don't care what the enemy have thrown in your direction. I don't care what the devil have thrown on in your life. You got to make up in your mind. Not the day, devil. I'm not giving up. I still see a light at the end of the tunnel. I still see some hope. You might have your feet on my neck right now, but, but I still see some hope. I'm still, I'm, I'm still wiggling. Somebody say, I'm still wiggling. I'm, I'm still trying to get up. I ain't, I ain't giving up. I'm not going to let you choke the life out of me. The 49ers saw a chance when that boy missed that 41-yard field goal. When he missed that field goal, the 49ers said, we got a real hope. We got a chance, y'all. Let's give it all we got. We have a chance. Let's give it all we got. And this is my encouragement to the believers today. We have a chance. Let's give it all we got. Let's give it all we got. Don't give God some of your time. Don't give God some of, some of you. Give him all of you. We are stewards. And you, we got to decide which steward we want to be. The 49ers prove they want to be good stewards. We're going to win this game. It's in my heart. We're gonna, we, we came to win. Tell me, I said, we came to win. We didn't come to lose. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to close with this. The final score. Somebody said the final score. The final score was Green Bay 21, the 49ers 24. The final score for the believer 
we win. The final score for the believer, we're going to bruise the enemy head under our feet. Somebody practice. Come on, get some practice. Get some practice. Put, put the devil on your feet. Get some practice in. Get, the, get some practice in. Put him, bruise his head. Bruise his head under your feet. Glory to God. Uh, get some practice in. Somebody say, stop the devil. <laughs> and praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise in this place. Lose your mind up in here, up in here, because God deserves all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Tony. Amen. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. I feel like I'm I'm in the shoot. I'm in the I'm in the I'm, I'm in the tunnel ready to run out. <laughs> Did y'all see that boy running that tunnel? That's the other game. <laughs> And it's show, Pastor, means some love. It's from some love. <laughs> Come grab this. Thank you, man of God. I appreciate you. How is everyone doing this morning? Uh-oh. Let me say that again. How is everyone doing this morning? The man of God just brought a word and so forth. That means what he brought should have waken you up. So that means you should not be sitting there idle or dead. That means you should have heard and that should have sparkled something in your spirit. That means you should be standing up, shouting and clapping, giving God. Because you sitting there like it's your final score. But it's not your final score. You got to get up and be the end zone and know that you win. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to understand the word of God when the word of God is spoken with scripture. It is rhema. And that means the word quakens your spirit. My God. Glory to God. So how are you this morning? All right. Give him praise for your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It is good to be here this morning. The I am church. For those who don't know me, I am Pastor Antonio Carter, the social pastor. Happy, excited about being a part of this ministry. And look, let's give it all to the founder, the one who God has called first to build this church, Pastor Anthony Mincy. Show him some love. Glory, hallelujah. And I thank God for my family, my beautiful queen, Pastor Valika Carter, my son, Kristen, and his friend, Jalea, and my daughter who's not here but should be logging on. I told her to log on. And my beautiful daughter, our beautiful daughter, Sarai Carter, thank you for your support and your love. We truly thank you all. We truly, truly do. All right. God has a word for you. He does. And this word is that this word that God has given me to speak into your lives today is a message that has been going on since ancient days. Yes. This has been going on since ancient days. And it's not going to stop. And it's, it is designed to take out God's people. It is. So if you could please stand with me as we read today's scripture. And then we're going to pray and then the Lord is going to walk us through. Amen. 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 I thank God for uh, our visitors. Thank God. Love you. Bless you. Good to have you. And if you could go to, with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 56, verse 1 through 4. And God is going to walk us through this word. And you know me. If you know me, you understand God is going to throw some twists and some turns in there. But we're going to all wind up on the same page. Amen. And it reads uh, Psalms, chapter 56, verse 1 through 4. And I'll be reading out of the NLT. 
All right, and here it goes. Oh, God, have mercy on me, for people are hounding me. <laughs> My foes attack me all day long. I am consistently hounded by those who slander me, and many are boldly attacking me. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Mistake number one, when I am afraid. He had to wake up and catch himself because it goes on to say, I praise God for what he has promised. He had to remember the promise of God. Look what he says after that. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? I bleed, you bleed, I walk, you walk. Come on, the same God that created me. I cannot be afraid of you. You are mortal just like me. My God, he had to wake up and catch himself. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord. I honor you on this day and all my life and every day, my Father, before this day and continue after this. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers that you will bring those who need to hear the word today to your church. And that, my Father, let a mighty word go forth. Let not, my Father, bring my word, but your word. And that, my Father, Holy Spirit, help me speak through me. Bring things to my mind that I will and shall represent the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. And that shall not, my father, boast or brag, but let the word speak for itself. And that those who have heard the word shall depart and, my father, understand and spread the word to bring others back into your house. And we thank you, father, forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. And let the church say amen. Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. Thank you. So, this scripture is very powerful. So powerful for as far as anyone can think and go back. That history shows that people will attack each other's characters. And so it, is, it has a name and we know it as character assassination. It is malice and unjustified. It's a demon. It has uh, an agenda to bring about harming a person person's good reputation by impacting individuals or groups of people, whether it be by Facebook, whether it be by TikTok, whether it be by Instagram, whether it be your neighbor, whether it be somebody in the church, whether it be something, but you hear about it, and when you hear about it, you know it's not the truth. And so, and when you do hear about it, you know it's it's a misunderstanding. Someone took something out of content. My God. And so and it has an order, and the order is to, to discredit, to dehumanize, to demonize, meaning demonizing a person or persons, replacing their identities by characterizing them as evil or wicked, whether it is actually you or not. But they need to paint a picture so everyone can see you not in the light, but in darkness. It's funny how darkness, when it brings darkness into your life, but at the same time, darkness dwell in darkness, so darkness needs to, okay, feed off of your fear. That's what the man is saying in the scripture. And so if it puts you in fear, then darkness can elevate and move from one person to the other person, making you, okay, come and moving you out of your comfort zone and away from God. Y'all ain't hearing me right now. My God. And so, character, 
character assassination is very powerful. My God. Character, so character assassination is a person and, and human error possessed over who you are and what you do, what you have and who you serve. My God. And so they are operating as agents of darkness, a demon demonizing you into what they have become, dehumanizing to de demonizing, meaning to move you again from God into the power of being powerless to serve a demonic deity. And so we as people, we don't understand because we're not in the word of God. And when you're not in the word of God, you're not recognizing the demon that's okay, character, taking your character and assassinating you. And so what we do, we react as a human, not understanding we become formed just like them dehumanizing ourselves because we give it right back to them dehumanizing them. We play that tit for tat. And so now at that moment, we are out of the will of God. My God. And so, when we get that understanding, people of God, anybody who comes to assassinate your character, it isn't for you. They, are, they, not, they will never be for you. They, they, will, they will always be against you. They, they don't believe what you believe. They, they have unbelief, so therefore, they must attack you but I'm here to tell you if you can't be a Joshua and say to yourself and to the demon as for me and my house I will serve the Lord you gotta let them know and they're gonna back off but if your plan tug of war with the world using worldly words that demon is puppeting you and has already moved you out of the will of God. My God. We got to understand that. Proverbs 26 and 24 says, he who hates discusses it with his lips, but he lays up a deceit in his heart. And when he speaks graciously, do not believe him. For there are seven abominations in his heart. Can I go deep? My God. It says seven abominations. For there are seven abominations, meaning seven is a number of completeness. And is associated with a divine six. And six is incomplete, and the, and the three sixes are inherently incomplete. So therefore, that person is operating not for God, but they're out of order, and they're operating in the spirit of darkness. So they are trying to get you out of the will of of God. Now I want to take a pause for the calls. Pastor Carter, come here. And see, my wife don't know, but God for months and months has given her the number 444. Four, four. Pastor Mincy, come on up here and stand with her, please. And so I, I kept asking her to pray and fast and pray and fast and figure out what God is trying to reveal to you four, four, four. It's not that she's lazy. It's not that she procrastinates. No, no, no. I'm going to explain why she hasn't done it yet. Because God revealed it to me. And so God using me on the way over here to now speak through to her what four, four means. My God. 
Hold your hands up. Because I told you in the car, trust God. And I told you this. When I speak and I say that a word, this is what the Lord says, and you my wife, you're standing here. Am I always accurate or I'm inaccurate? Accurate. I told you years ago when we was going to get fired, you didn't believe me, you laughed, and we got fired from that job, didn't I? Mm-hmm. I'm just, I got to have, she got, that's my only proof I got, besides the man of God. State trooper pulled her over on the way over here. I said, and I had to remind her, trust God. The state trooper came and said, go to church and enjoy yourself. Didn't write a ticket. Glory, hallelujah. But she doesn't understand how serious this matter is because my wife don't understand how important she is right about now in this decade on this very day she doesn't understand and so I had to write it down and the Lord told me to tell you 444 is an angel that means he loves you he is supporting you and he is guiding you right now it serves as a reminder that you are on the right path and that the angels are by your side offering their unwavering support Number four, single number, number four, that means you, me, Kristen, and Sariah, four. You are creating stability, security, and a strong foundation. You are a whole. I'm 99%, but I can't do anything with the 1%. Because I am nothing without the 1% that will make us 100%. You got to understand, you are the glue to our family. You got to know this. You got to hold yourself accountable and know that God has sent an angel to support you, to provide for you, to give you stability and a foundation for our family. Give him praise. Glory to God. This is a man, a husband, speaking this. Most men won't get up here, Pastor. And I got a word for Lady J, but I need your permission to allow me to speak that word. Amen. See, watch this. I know order. Most pastors will just go ahead and start speaking to another man. No, I know order. I need to get his permission because he is the head of this church. Glory to God. Y'all missed it. If I would have just went to his wife, everything God has spoken through me to give to her, gone. Because I don't know order. Man is first order. My God. I thought she was going to, y'all done. I thought she was going to pass out or something. (laughs) I ain't wanted to pass out, hit the instruments, anything. (laughs) My God. Here we go. I had to take that pause because so many people have been attacking her character. And it's been for three months. Three months. And every time she wake up, the reason why it's 444 she would text me, don't know she texting me, is at 444. She would wake up in the middle of the night numerous times seeing 444. And she continues to see 444. So now you have an understanding of who you are and who you are in Christ Jesus. And now you know who stands with you. Death says the Lord. Give him praise. And so we must, I know, baby, you excited. Hallelujah. Praise him. He ain't, he didn't, don't worry, let him have fun. Glory to God. So now, Solomon wrote Proverbs to warn us about the hidden dangers of flattery and hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Thank you, honey. That go that 1%. And so, but. 
You got to understand you have a loving father in heaven that has a word. And if you are operating in the word, that word will expose their deceitfulness. Watch this. And when God exposes that person or persons, he's telling you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separated, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my son and daughter, says the Lord Almighty, my God. But sadly, there are folks that, but yet, you keep company with them. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 9. You don't want to come out from among them. You'd rather keep company with them. You got some folks who got friends that talk about them, talk down to them, shame them, and but they'll migrate to them. And so today's word, the message title that God has given me is every time I turn around, my God. You ain't, you're going to get that. Every time I turn around, you got something to say. Every time I turn around, you always in my business. Every time I turn around, it seems like I can't get ahead. Every time I turn around, it seems like you're trying to hold me down. Every time I turn around, you come into my house and you're going back to those who are talking about me and you giving them, okay, the worst news when you know I'm living on God's kingdom. I got a nice house. I got a nice car. But your report says to them that I'm broke. The devil is a lie. Every time I turn around, you got something negative to say. My God. But I'm here to tell you, watch God turn this around for your favor. Hallelujah. And so, men that carry tales, et cetera, and et cetera, has been around before you and I. In the book of Hebrews, men of slanders, and the book of Ezekiel, along with Leviticus, talk about the sins of informers. And every ready to lend themselves to plots against the life or character of innocent people. My God. And so people of God, you got to understand, slanders men and women have been around only for reason. See, they, they are attacking and assassinating your character. But if you are a firm believer in Jesus Christ, you got to understand they are your cheerleaders. And they are the ones. And every time, they, every time you turn around and they got something to say, you got to know that God is doing the opposite, building you up. You got to give him praise on that one. Every time they want to build you down, God has already said, I got a solid foundation for your life. You got to understand every time they say you look funny and you don't know how to talk or speak, you don't know how to dress, you got to understand that God is the one that feeds me and clothes me. I, he is my provider. He is my everything. He is my El Shaddai. Every time I turn around I look and see where my help comes from all I got to do is be still and know that he is God give him praise my God you got to understand that those people have to be on planet earth for a reason my God they are not they, th they think they are here to break you. But my, your God says, I put them there to make you. My God. And so, do not go about spread, spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. You got to understand that 
Leviticus chapter 19 and 16 is letting you know that stay out of folks business be your business and be about God's business don't worry about the naysayers and the soothsayers and this and that say don't worry about them folks what they all got to say it's only one thing that's going to have to say at the end of the day and at the beginning of the morning and the midnight hours is Jesus Christ you got to know this my God you better know it. And so meaning people should not endanger others or stand idly by while other persons is being taken advantage of and in danger. You got to understand this goes on in the world every single day. Don't, it happens on Facebook. It happens on TikTok. It happens everywhere on social media. Watch this. You had a female disgrading her husband while he was trying to go to work. She kept talking about the man and her mother didn't make it any better. She kept calling the man all kinds of names, letting him know that he wasn't a father. And the girl, as the man got ready to go, the girl went to the room and shot and killed her husband. She in the forehead and ran in front of the children. My God. This is what character assassination would do. Social media. Everybody take out their phone. Why? They want to just see somebody else. Because you get more likes and you become a millionaire overnight. If you got that phone filming somebody, recording them while their character is being assassinated. This is what social media is all about. Look at Cat Williams. Whether he's right, whether he's wrong, we don't know. But Shannon Sharp makes $708,000 off that TikTok, off, the, off his show. In the millions. And I'm going to explain that, but that ain't for y'all. I get with Pastor Mincy when we talk about how social media makes money using YouTube talk show. But this is what they do. People don't know how to make money by saying you a good man. Stop saying you a good woman. Pastor, Pastor Mincy, first lady, come on up here. Mm-hmm. Come on up here. Mm-hmm. Been waiting on you. I already got, already got Pastor Mincy's permission. Pastor Mincy, why she come up here? Can you go to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13? I, 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 and I'm going to need your help in a moment. Pastor Carter, can you help her? She can put her pretty old little things down and come on, on, on up here. And so, you got to understand that you must know who you are and whose you are in Christ Jesus. Come with her. And so, if you don't know whose you are and know that Christ Jesus lives within you, you are subject to fail. So, I, I, I had a word from the Lord and I already gave it to Pastor Carter. And at the same time, he gave me a word for you. And the Lord told me to tell you that there's something he has already put in you and that you have been dying to get it out of you and that there's people who you are desired to reach. God told me to tell you, keep that same desire and keep that same spirit of fire and because he's going to give you an audience my God. God told me to tell you in the year 2024 that what you desire you are now ready. He has already equipped you and he has already manifested in you. He told me to tell you get ready and let it go. Do you receive this word? I do. Give your hands a hand clap for God. Glory hallelujah. I'm, I'm sorry. It just happens. Even when I'm working with the inmates and I'm counseling them as I'm teaching substance abuse and life skills, 
the Lord just hit me next thing you know, I'm telling, hey, if you, Lord told me to tell you, somebody's trying to kill you, you cannot go back home. True story. And he pulled me in the office, he says, it's my cousin. He was a kingpin. I can't tell you where he, he's out of prison now, but I cannot tell you where he moved to, but he cannot go back home to Orlando, Florida. My God. So, moving right along, I'm almost done. Social media is dangerous. And for those who know me, I don't bother folks on social media. But when I, I was sitting home, and it was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I saw a, something, and, 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 and I posted some pictures of every man that's black and white, green and purple in dress. And I put the pictures on Facebook, and I put a scripture with it. And the scripture says, Deuteronomy chapter two, 22, verse 5, a woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear woman's clothing, for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. All them folks came after me. But one thing all them folks, except for the 30 plus folks that came to my side and understood the word, they didn't even read the scripture. They looked at the picture. That is how folks are going to miss God. They automatically, when they saw pictures, because it's a movie star, they automatically put entertainment on it and wanted to substitute and push God's word out the way. Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 13. Yes, sir. I want you to read that again. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. My God, I put a stamp on that. You coming at me with the flesh because you live by the flesh. God is telling you not to live by the flesh, but to live by his word. You can't argue against that. Every time someone says something about your character, do what I did to them folks. I just kept posting the same old scripture. They couldn't say anything. Every time they put a video, I put a video. Word, a scripture. Every time they came back with something else, I put another scripture. They got mad and mad. I kept putting scripture on top of scripture on top of scripture. Shut them down. Glory, hallelujah. One thing you ain't going to do is come at me. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. When you come at me, me ain't coming at you. I'm bringing my God. Hallelujah. They couldn't say nothing. Oh, I got phone calls. That was good phone calls. But I stood on the foundation of God, the word. God is in the business of loving all of his children. Watch this. People say, you can't say this or that because you're going to hurt their feelings. Excuse me. Excuse me. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Like Martin said, <laughs> God will hurt your feelings because God's word will tell you straight down that's the spirit in the man. But you, his son and daughter, he is not talking to the spirit in operation in your life. He is talking to the demon that's trying to be the operator of your life. And so therefore you find offensive to what the word of God says. God's word saves you. God's word loves you. 
God's word holds you and gives you foundation. God's word shows you the path of righteousness, not injustice. God's word, every time I look around, them folks got something to say. But I'm got something to say. God's word is everlasting. God's word is nothing but the truth. God's word says, okay, and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Glory, hallelujah. Give him praise. Every time I turn around, they got something to say. Every time they say something, that means they're battling you in the flesh, never the spirit. I don't care how good they talk. I don't care how much they tell you they saved. Every time they want to argue against the scripture, the word of God, they ain't saved. Glory to God. They can't stand correction. Thank you, baby. They can't not only stand correction because to bring about correction is to give direction. Hello, somebody. My God. Every time I turn around, they try and assault you. Every time I turn around, they try to send all kinds of folks your way and to set you up every time you turn around they say you are not that important when God says you are so important they, they, every time you turn around they want to discuss you and, 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 and pass judgment without you knowing God has already notified you because uh, at that time you just somehow know when folks talking about you and so at that moment you just drop them knees and fold them hands and let the Lord know I love them I have no ought against them Lord I understand what they're going through will you just rescue them and deliver them from out of what they are in my God y'all not hearing me prayer supersedes everything so every time you turn around you got to throw up a prayer my God hallelujah you got to understand that you see and you see people lashing out is due to their own insecurities and frustrations the attacks may seem and stem from a lack of understanding, a difference in belief, or even a desire to deflect attention from their own shortcomings. Watch this. They throw insults or talking about you that leads to character assassination. Here's the breakdown of character assassination. And although it doesn't feel like it. The reason is simple. Character attacks are all about feeling intimidated by another or taking advantage of speaking against your, what you believe and who you serve. That's all it's all about. They don't like that you won't be moved. They don't like that you won't waver. They don't like that you won't, okay, indulge into the world and, and take a taste of sin. Trust this, watch this. The moment you do, they're going to turn against you even more. They're not going to get better. Ministers and pastors came after me. I told one female, you just got ordained. I need to talk to your pastor. How dare you come at me with this scripture? Do you not know the word of God? Matter of fact, let me come on your Facebook page and check some things out. She blocked me. Glory. Hallelujah. Don't you come back. <laughs> I knew she blocked me because I said, let me go check. Thank God the devil is gone. Here we go. We got to understand that you got to learn how to fire back. Psalms chapter 1 verse, um, chapter 12 verse 1 through 4 is a prayer of deliverance from proud, evil people who spread lies. So you got to understand, let your prayers work against them. 
How so? Aim your spear at anyone who hunts me down but promises to save me. Let all who wants to kill me be disgraced and put to shame. Chase away and confuse all who plan to harm me. Send your angel after them and let them be like straw in wind. Psalms 35 verse 1 through 6 CEV version. You got to let that be your prayer. People of God, hear me clearly. Hear me very clearly. If you don't know scripture, you need to learn scripture. Let me tell you how I began to learn how to read scripture. My wife would tell you we had an apartment. And what I was doing when God had called me, when I wanted to change my life, I began to sit down and read the Bible, but I could not stay awake. I would read one verse and find myself asleep. So what I did, I went to the longest verse in the Bible, Psalms 119, and I stood up, she'll tell you, I started walking and started reading that. I wanted to break that curse of sleep, and I started just reading and reading, and I did it every single day. So when I was able to sit down, down, I can read the word of God at long periods of hours. Then I took the word of God. Then I started taking the scripture and utilizing the scripture and using the scripture as prayer. And then I started leaving the house at 3 o'clock in the morning, sometimes at 12 o'clock in the morning. And I wouldn't return until 6 o'clock in the morning, building my relationship with God and my line. And now she'll tell you and my son will tell you, you can't get me out of the word of God. When I'm studying the word of God, they know not to disturb me because I'm with my God. My son will walk in the room. Oh, I see your dad close the door. If I'm upstairs, oh, I didn't know you were studying. My wife will be like, oh, he's going to be all day. So they will leave the house and go on their own because I love the word of God. That's how I wanted God so bad. I wanted things in my life to change. And I knew it had nothing to do with my wife. It had everything to do with this man. Everything that was going wrong was never her fault. There are six things, and Aaron, I'm jumping. There are six characters, seven or seven ways you can cut these folks off from character assassination. One, you cut them off. Do not talk to them. Do not, oh, it's been a year, and oh, I stopped talking to them now, we're back friends, now we're good to go. They ain't changed. If you are still going to church and you're still serving the Lord, and you see them and they're not going to church, they ain't changed. Oh, Pastor Carter, what makes you think because they don't go to they don't go to church, they ain't changed? All right, it's a proven fact. Go ahead and be with them. See what you're gonna get back. Because watch this. Here's the proven fact. Your language is the word of God. Their language, they don't want to hear the word of God. So when you get the ready to talk about the Bible, they're gonna talk about the world. They're going to say to you because they have nothing to say back. Oh, I know. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to change. I'm going to go one day. Matter of fact, I'll go with you. When it's time to go with you, they ain't with you. Number two, damage control. Whatever they've done to you, damage control. That means you don't go to them to fix it. That means you forgive them and you go to God and pray and release their spirit from your spirit. Number three, let go and let God handle it. It is not for anything on planet Earth for us as God's children to deal with when it comes to evilness, treachery, character assassination, and folks who just don't want to do good. There are some men in prison who will never, ever, 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 ever change. They keep them locked up in H dorm. They don't come out. They keep them in E dorm. They don't come out. They, they were in prison population. They could not do right. So now they're in isolation. Number five, 
Number four, slowly, I mean, correct false perception slowly. You better look spiritually. Don't go in it hard. Oh, I'm a loving person. I'm kind. I love everybody. You're going to get bit. And because the devil know you love everybody, you get along with everybody, the devil is going to use one seed, one person that's going to take that love from you and you'll never trust somebody else ever again. Hello, I'm talking to a woman, okay? You, that's why it ain't her fault, but she allowed her heart to give and associate with folks that wasn't for her. Now she's scared and skeptical about dating this man, that man. Now she wants to hold back and pull back. And so when she does get that right man, a good man, a man of God, now everything all those men did to her that was not love, unloving, she going to dish it back to him and he's going to run away, spirit to spirit. You better know how it works. Number five, self-reflect. Before you get in anything, before you, you need to look at where God has brought you from. Evaluate your heart before you move. Whatever they said about you, don't they want you come they want you to come running with words they need you to operate as they operate in the world they need that six look at the big picture look at the big picture what's the big picture the alpha and the omega there's no other picture there's none Seven, the best practice is just repeat God's word and scripture. Just repeat God's word and scripture. Leave them folks alone. So how you turn this around? I realize, and I'm closing, they walk like me. They look like you and I. They must face the same demons, but I had to think to myself, every time I turn around, I don't see dead people. I see demons operating in dead people. Every time I turn around, they fail to realize that we all got to meet up and get caught up with the God of glory, my God. They, they, they fail to realize that they, uh, they need to know that when you come at me, I have a word for you that will defend me. And that word said, vengeance is mine. Thus says the Lord. I don't have to speak. I don't have to ball up my fist. I don't have to do a drive-by. I don't have to send someone. I don't have to post anything. I don't need to call your job. I don't need to put you on child support. I don't need to okay, go up there and cut your baby mama car up and put mustard and key it. I don't need none of that. Every time I turn around, there's always somebody in the world doing something against me. But I'm here to tell you how you turn that around. You need to say, every time I turn around, he walks with me. Every time I turn around, he talks to me. Every time I turn around, he is delivering me. Every time I turn around, he is protecting and providing for me. Every time I turn around, God's grace and mercy is with me. Every time I turn around, I can't see you because God has hidden me from your evilness. Every time I turn around, my ears are tentative to his voice, never your voice. Every time I turn around, I got to give him praise. I got to shout and give him glory. Every time I turn around, I don't have time to think about you. I got time to think about where he's brought me from and to. Every time I turn around, I got to know that God I live and God I shall die for. Every time I turn around, you won't have anything to do with me because you didn't bring me in this world and you sure enough can't take me out this world. You're only a mere mortal. 
every turn I turn around, I reflect on the word of God and I know where my help comes from. Every time I turn around, you can't do damage control because God has healed my heart. Every time I turn around, God has lo- is a loving God. You can't love me enough. You can't do anything enough to me. Because every time I turn around, I'm on my hands and knees praying for your sake. Every time I turn around, I'm praying for your deliverance. Every time I turn around, I know who I am and I know that I am. And God is my God and my Savior. Give him praise. You got to know this. Whatever they throw at you, reverse it. But don't reverse it at them. Give it right back to God. You take it, give it to God. Some people take it and they put it in their heart and they go deal with it themselves. That's where you go wrong. You take it, you give it to God. You take it, you give it to God. Watch this. You give it to God enough, God going to move you out the way and God is going to deal with them. You best believe that. True story. I have the young man start a business, him and his wife. Me and my wife, we in a little apartment. He, get, he in a uh, 3,000 square foot house. He went and bought another house. But he needed income. So he got a contract. I helped him. I actually got the contract with him for the Department of Juvenile Justice. My supervisor says, I needed that contract. I wanted that contract to go ahead. I said, oh, my boy got that. And so I called all my connections, all of the caseworkers, filled his house up with eight juveniles. His income was $2,500 a month. He got a $50 million grant. All he had to do was pay me $1,200. So I went to his house, sit down, talk to him, see how everything was going to get the, my, my check. And he says, he got quiet. So I asked him. He says, I don't have anything for you. I can't pay you. I'm not paying you. My wife would tell you, the old me, I would have buried him in that garage. Height and weight don't mean nothing to me. A man was just tall. When I didn't get my first check, he went down 20 flights of stairs. Lord, forgive me. He delivered me. I'm from the 305. He talking like that? See, I just got through telling you every time I turn around, God has delivered me. You missed that. So I didn't do anything. I went home and told my wife, and we needed that money. But God turned it around. He came to church on New Year's Eve night. He don't know. I already knew that. My coworker found out he didn't pay me through the caseworkers. She went in and she snatched that grant, took it from him. And that grant went to my salary. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Be still and know that he is God. I'm done. That's every time they come at you, turn it around. And give it to God. Let me say this, Pastor Mincy, and I'm done. This world is not getting any better. Let me say that again. This world is not getting any better and it's not going to get any better. If you got hopes and dreams and visions and all that, that's fine. Keep that for time. Stay on it. Fight for your children. But just know, I tell my son and my daughter all the time, I'm sorry we brought y'all here. I ain't lying. I tell you, I'm sorry we brought you here. This world ain't getting any better. We brought you in a world that's just destructive, dangerous. Watch this. If you say the world is going to get better, then you don't know scripture. 
Because the world, if it was going to get any better, there wouldn't be a book of Revelation. Hello. Hello. So, live your life for God. That's what Pastor Minister said. Live your, the final score, live your life for God and nothing else. Because the day is coming. He is coming. And watch this. And if you're in this word, you can feel the presence of God. You know he is coming. You do not know when, but you know when you see the things that are going on in this world, you know without a shadow of doubt in your spirit, he is coming back for his people. He is. There are crooked men in the government, crooked men in cities, crooked men that's out there doing the things not for God and are hurting God's people. But I'm telling you, a time is going to come and you're going to feel it. Don't run out in the streets rioting. Don't run nowhere or stealing and robbing from somebody because you don't have nothing to eat. Turn to the church. I know you're saying that the church has not helped you. The church hasn't done anything. But trust me, there is a church out there. The I am church. And I'm telling you, as long as I'm here supporting this man of God, we line up together. We ain't stealing, we ain't crooking, and we ain't hooking. I tell you that right now. Anybody that knows Pastor Antonio Carter, I don't do that, period. You need help? The I Am Church is here. Salvation is free. Salvation is free. Don't lose your life because you want to be a part of this world. Because you want a dollar. I'm teaching men in prison about finances. And man, you will not believe they didn't know anything about money. The only thing they knew about money is to chase it. They had 3000 5000 a week, and they couldn't even hire a lawyer. And when they could hire a lawyer, all that 50000 60000 went to that lawyer, and they still got 10 years. I'm paying 50000 I'm not serving not one day. So you better use that $50,000 for your common service. Go to get some canteens, some chips, and soda. You're going to be there for a minute eating that prison food. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. All hearts and minds clear? Y'all give God a clap. Hand clap. Amen. Every time I turn around, amen, we thank God. Come on, give him another hand. Thank God for, amen, thank God for the, the word. It, it so coincides with the power moment, doesn't it? That Romans 16 and 20 and the, the conclusion of the whole matter and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet tell that neighbor said he's under my feet the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and the end of that is amen so be it and so shall it be amen Amen. Come on, tell that neighbor, say, it's time to give. It's time to give. It's time to give. Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope, amen, come. Amen. The envelopes are right there in the basket. Amen. But I just want to share something with you today. Amen. The seed that leaves your hand will never leave your life. It may leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. It's a concept that many farmers have. That's why Jesus always talked about sowing and reaping because he knew uh, it was better to give than it is to what to receive and every farmer know that when they sow a seed in the ground that seed may leave their hand but it'll never leave their life because it always bring them a harvest amen tell that neighbor say give and it will be given into your life 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will men give into your bosom. Amen. God will, amen, make sure you receive. Amen. Amen. So this time to give. Amen. Those of you who are online, you can see uh, the ways in which you can give. Also those in the house. Amen. We do have envelopes in the basket. Also, if you want to be saved, amen, the man of God did talk about, talk about salvation. Salvation is free. It don't cost you nothing but confession. It don't cost you nothing but, hey, I'm yielding my heart. I'm yielding my life to the Lord. That's all it costs you. It costs you your life. Amen? That's what it costs. Amen? The Bible says if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. That's all you got to do is say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Amen, 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 I believe, amen. So also, if you want to be a member of the I Am Church, the doors of the church is open, amen. The doors of the church is open, amen. You can see myself or my wife at the end of the service say, you know what, I'm joining this church. I want to join the I Am Church, amen. And those of you online, amen, you can also do the same thing. You can come in person or you could do, do it online, fill out the card, and we will get the message, Amen. Amen. All hearts and all minds are clear. Amen. All hearts and all minds are clear. Amen. We thank God for, amen, amen, Christopher and Patricia and David. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. For family. Amen. Thank God for them being here with us today. Amen. Daycare is coming. Daycare is coming. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Daycare is coming. We do. We got child care in the making. Somebody said, don't worry about it. It ain't, it ain't no reflection on the, on, the, on the child. The child gonna be a child. I expect that. Don't bother me at all. Amen. Because I'm, I'm hey, somebody tells somebody, say, I'm working on the vision. I'm working on the vision. Amen. Working on the vision. See, if you don't have no children, you don't have no need to have no nursery, no daycare. No, you don't need none of that if you don't have no children. But thank God for providing children. Amen. So now we know we're on our way. To getting the nursery ready. Amen? Amen. So thank God we are, we are, we are uh, doing things here at the I Am Church. And we thank God for that. Amen. But it takes money. It takes money. Amen. It takes your seed. You got to sow seeds. Amen. So we can make that happen. Amen. Amen. So if you, all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Then come on. Come on and close us out. Amen. Glory to God. If you could please stand. All right. Phantom is coming. The Lord spoke to me in my office. Phantom is coming. That doesn't mean you're going to run out of food. Look up the word phantom. Famine. Thank you, baby. Famine is it's, it's coming. <clears throat> I can't stress it. I hate when I hear something. And my spirit is <clears throat> hungry, trying to reach people. So those who are tuned in, I'm telling you, it's coming. Famine is coming. You don't want to be in the streets when it goes down. You want to be prepared. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Moses, our God today who we serve your only begotten son that you have sent to save us all and that my father as we stand here today we repent of all our sins we ask for your forgiveness we confess that we're no longer sinners serving Satan and that my old father we receive you because we believe in your son the Lord Jesus Christ who has risen and he has all power and father watch over us I plead the blood of Jesus from the crown of our heads to the very sole of our feet and that my father that we are on the foundation because our footsteps are already ordered by you and now oh Lord Jesus let us not depart from your word and that, my Father, let us not allow the enemy to remove us. Cover us in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Let us see with our spiritual eyes and hear with our spiritual ears. And may we speak spiritually and that we shall be in the right standing with God. And Father, let this word go forth and that it has planted a seed in the hearts of men and women that are here today. And those who were tuned in and those who will hear this word, that they shall be saved. Because it's not about anything else on earth. It's about you, Lord, your grace and your mercy. Keep us safe until we meet again. And that we shall depart to bring others in to receive salvation in Jesus' mighty name. And let the church say, and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I love you in Jesus' mighty name. And there's nothing you can do about it. Glory, hallelujah. Hope you were blessed by this worship experience here at the I Am Church. Make sure you share this message with your loved ones. Remember, there are three ways for you to give. Number one, website giving. Open your web browser and type in T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G and click on the giving tab. Number two is giving through Cash App. Open the Cash app on your Android or iOS device and enter your amount you'd like to give. And search the I Am Church and click send and you will get a confirmation. Number three is given through our church app. Go to the I Am Church app and click on the Give tab. And you will be able to give through your church app. Thanks for watching and we hope you were blessed. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at T-I-A-C-J-A-X and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you have not downloaded your church app, please go download our church app, go to your phone's app store and search The I Am Church and click download. For those who just gave their life to Christ or want to become a member here at the I Am Church, please visit T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G forward slash connect and fill out the connect card. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.